do not have the words to describe how deeply this music touched me, which is a difficult confession for a writer to make. The music of the plants awakened me to my plan to blindness. And the term plant blindness was coined by two botanists way back in 1999. And it refers to our inability to notice the plant world around us. What we do not see, we do not value, we do not protect. Perhaps one of the greatest ironies of our human existence is that we pay so little heed to the very thing that gives us life. And beyond giving us life, the plant world holds an intelligence that may very well secure our existence as a species. So awakened to my own plant blindness, I knew that I had to bring the music of the plants to a wider audience. I felt that I needed to speak to the persons who are not already subject to a lifetime of conditioning of not seeing the plant world. So I wrote the very first children's book on the music of the plants. I was intrigued to learn that the music of the plants device was created with the specific purpose of opening a channel of communication between us and the plant world, as opposed to simply a musical device. In keeping with this conference's theme of regenerating and bringing new life, I will share why a collective reconnection with communicating with the natural world, something I believe we have lost through our so-called civilization, is necessary at this time. And I trust that like me, you will come to see how the music of the plants is a key component in reconnecting us to communication with the plant world. As I mentioned, my mission includes nurturing the nature leaders of tomorrow. But who are the nature leaders of tomorrow? To me, they are the scientists and engineers who create solutions to our most pressing challenges based on nature's inherent wisdom. They are the lawyers who defend the rights of nature, the teachers who share plant intelligence, and the artists who influence our view of the world. I believe that children grounded in a deep love for the wonder, awe, and importantly, the intelligence in the natural world will become the defenders of that natural world and the protectors of our deep connection to nature. To engineer this paradigm shift, I've created, in addition to my children's book, fun, engaging online lessons sharing the intelligence in the natural world. I introduce young children to how plants care for and communicate with each other. And I introduce them to the inherent intelligence in nature by sharing, for example, how trees can count. I'm creating an online course for the 10 to 15 year age group covering a range of topics to inspire them to see the natural world as a teacher and as their own inspiration for charting their way in the world. For example, in session four, I invite children to think of the language we use to speak of our relationship with nature. By using the word it, we diminish in our own minds Earth's agency as a living, breathing organism, our home and sustenance. This is a disservice to ourselves as we are reliant on Earth. Earth will, of course, survive our ignorance. I'm referencing here the work of Robin Wall Kimmerer, botanist and author, who suggests that we refer to the natural world as key, singular, and kin, plural, derived from the Native American Anishinaabe word for living Earth. I will very likely mispronounce this word, and please correct me if you can, but I want to share with you Kimura's thinking. Using the last syllable of that word, ki, not only makes it simpler for us, but the plural kin is already familiar to us as an understanding of relationship, of a belonging. I find this so very poignant. Our referencing of the natural world around us as it, as an object, has led to us seeing our earth as only a resource to be exploited, not as a living being, and certainly not as our teacher. I was intrigued to learn of a teacher who incorporates Kimura's work into her seventh grade lessons. When she asked her students to reflect on the indigenous way 
of viewing trees as persons, their responses reflected the innate connection with nature that needs to be nurtured in children. One response was, we could learn great wisdom from the trees because they have longer lifespans than humans and many other living things. Another was, when did the connection between humans and trees start to disappear? Do you know why? Do you think we'll ever regain that connection? I have witnessed this innate connection in my own interaction with kids. Once, when sharing grass music, this young lad asked grass, how do you feel about us walking on you? And does it hurt to be cut? We took some time to listen for the answer that came through Grass's music. Children move in the world as part of it, not separate from it. We need to ensure that this is not conditioned out of them. What if they never lost that wonder and awe with which they interact with the natural world? How would that then affect the adults in their lives? I truly believe that plant music is a perfect way to nourish and maintain that innate connection with the natural world. I've described my own experience of my own plant reawakening. What if our children never had to experience such a reawakening? In sharing the intelligence in the natural world, I educate children on how plants design technology through biomimicry, bioengineering, and biotechnology. I introduce them to the plant scientists and biologists shaping our understanding of the plant world, and importantly, how their work is challenging long-held beliefs in the scientific community. One very important fact I introduce to children is how current scientific study is meeting traditional ecological knowledge. Indigenous peoples have always communicated with the plant world. They have always appreciated nature as conscious, a concept with which plant scientists are now grappling. In Nandi and the Music of the Plants, the lead character encourages her classmates to donate a portion of their pocket money to protecting the Amazon. I plan a follow-up book in which children will learn about the indigenous peoples of the Amazon and how they and other indigenous peoples are the caretakers of our earth. This is an issue that I hold daily with a portion of all sales on my website being donated to Survival International. I want children to appreciate that all of our ancestors, no matter which continent they inhabited, lived in close communion with the natural world, just as indigenous communities today do, a paradigm to which we must return. I wanna bring us back to the music of the plants, this remarkable device that initiated my journey into children's education. As I mentioned, the music of the plants device was created with the specific intention of opening us to communication with the plant world, to reconnecting humanity with the plant world. I was fascinated to learn that indigenous peoples sing songs as part of ceremony with master plants, songs that they believe come from the plants themselves. We have lost the ability to communicate with the plant world in this way. I see the music of the plants as taking us back to that time, back to the future when we can once again communicate with the plant world. In inviting children to experience plant music and to experience the intelligence in nature, I believe that this will be a natural process for them, that the plants will speak to them and that they will listen, that they will accept that communication in the way indigenous peoples do now. If all of this sounds a little too woo-woo, you may be interested to learn that the Heart Math Institute has devised technology to help us hear trees speaking. This technology reads the electrical signals in trees and the surrounding earth, the signals then being displayed on our computer screens. I do believe that we are in the midst of a paradigm shift towards a time when we do become reconnected with our earth and everything she has to teach us. If your work aligns with this shift, I would love to connect with you. I would love to collaborate with anyone who sees a space for plant intelligence and plant music in their own programs. Thank you for this opportunity to share my vision with you. 
I look forward to seeing you in the breakout room, but if you can't make it there, please contact me on my website, nandymotp.org. Thank you. Mm -hmm.